All right, thank you for uh, watching this demonstration on the Des Moines Kube Classic Kube Tournament System presented by Kube United. Uh, this is a system that was developed by Chris Hodges, a director here at, the, at Kube United. The history of the system it was created by the Des Moines Kube Club. Um, this is back in 2011. It was, they were inspired for, for creating the system from uh, attending Magic the Gathering tournaments. Uh, also, chess tournaments use this system, kind of referred to as the Swiss chess system. And uh, it's uh, kind of appropriate as one of the nicknames for Kube is Viking Chess. This was nicknamed by Eric Anderson of the United States National Kube Championship, referred to as the Meat Grinder. Uh, part of that is as a competitive player, you're going to have to, you're going to get a chance to play against a lot of real high level players teams at that tournament um, versus just kind of maybe running into them near the end of the tournament um, which makes it for a lot of fun i find that as a player it adds a lot of value because if i travel a long way i want to actually get a chance to play against some top teams uh, or, or at least teams at my level and so uh so this is one reason i really enjoy this tournament and as a director i really enjoy it because this is a tournament is very easy to administer um, technically, the system is based on a chess format referred to as the Monrad Swiss Tournament with a Solkoff score tiebreaker uh, for any chess enthusiasts at home. Uh, the variation that we have on that system is, allows for a team to be leading but did not finish. Typically in chess tournaments, um, it's always a team wins or a player wins or ties. Um, this one we actually have a variation allowed for if the game does not finish on time um, that, it, that teams can uh, it does have that, that also a, a, a accounts differently. Um, the system is used by over 20 kube tournaments in North America alone in 2016 um, across nine different states um, also has been reported to be used in some European tournaments. Uh, we, I know, I uh, actually use this in the Kube League that I run here in Beloit, Wisconsin, and uh, a variation of the system is also used in the Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Uh, if you have any questions on how that works, uh, feel free to contact us here at Kube United. By the end of the year, we've estimated that this will have roughly about 100 tournaments used since its, since its creation, um, So, and that's across worldwide. Some of the advantages of the systems is that kind of as you manage registration, you can uh, start entering teams in early in the spreadsheet, and I'll show you how that works, and that kind of helps make it easier for when you get there that day. Um, very easy to administer. I've, I've There's been several tournaments where I've just taught the person who ends up administering the software for us. Usually about it takes about five to ten minutes. They've taught them that morning, and they pick up on it, and uh, it, it, it is very easy. Um, one nice thing as a player is you're going to find that you're going to have less downtime during the day. Um, especially in like the round robin formats, I've been to tournaments where I've sat, you know, if I had a buy in my round robin or, you know, or, or if there's uneven number of teams, um, we've sat oh, up to, I, you know, there's been stories of two to three hours. Um, you're not going to really uh, find that with this the, and during the qualifying rounds of this, this, with this system. It's really easy to add teams up to that last minute also, um, since you don't have to worry about kind of making out a bracket ahead of time, um, since this kind of creates everything for you, and we'll show you how that works. Um, it's really easy if a team just walks up that morning and says, hey, do you have room for another one? Sure, as long as you have enough you know, pitches available, um, you can easily add them, and uh, that, that is a nice feature as well. Uh, as a player or as a team, um, it's a very fair system. It seeds you how you perform that day of the tournament. So it doesn't use like past performance or, um, or you know, or somebody kind of has to decide, you know, which bracket or even some kind of just random type of, of way of determining who plays who. Um, this is actually a very fair system that seeds your performance based on how you played that day. Um, it's really fun for teams to track the progress on a leaderboard. Uh, we are working on a version where it will automatically update um, to to the to the internet, so people can track it from remotely. Um, 
distances really enjoyed we found by recreational and competitive teams as because as the day goes on the competitive teams are the ones who are playing against each other in the qualifying rounds and the more recreational teams based on you know as, as you wouldn't lose you're going to start being matched with teams of your own ability and uh and so that can just make for much more enjoyable competitive matches where you're not getting not, you know beat right away and things like that we, uh, about midway through 2015, we started switching to single game qualifiers versus best two out of three for the matches. Um, this allows us to play more rounds. We typically find it's been used to play seven to nine qualifying rounds. Um, one nice feature is this does allow you to play against more teams. Um, also, as the more rounds you play, it kind of seeds or ranks those teams better. Um, I've seen the system used in one versus one tournaments up to three versus three. Um, and it, it really works well. There's no reason why it wouldn't work well with the six, uh, six player teams as well. Uh, the one nice thing about this with single games is that if you do have an odd number of teams where somebody has to sit out around, um, having to buy that round, the longest they're really going to sit is 25 minutes. Um, and that is, that is a very nice feature. Uh, the system does support elimination brackets, so after we go through the qualifying rounds, typically what we'll take is the top 8 or the top 16 teams, move them to the championship bracket, and we'll show you how this system handles that. Um, there are also, also multiple consolation bracket options that, that we have available with this system. When you score a game, um, what we recommend is that the matches are 25 minutes. Typically what we'll say at the 20-minute 20, 20 mark is we'll give them a, uh, give all the teams there that day a warning uh, that there's five minutes to go and then when 25 minutes up is is if you started or you know if you started that round you can basically say once this round is complete uh, you end the you know end the match right there if the team wins if, if a team wins they can come and report the score at any time and they get one point and that is if you've been able to knock down the king to finish the game if you do not finish the game, then we count the remaining baseline cubes. Uh, so let's say one team is knocked down four, and the other team is three. So the team that knocked down four will get, uh, will turn it in as I did not finish, but I was leading. So they're going to get 0. 0.67 points, while the team that was trailing gets 0. 0.33 points. And if you do come up with a tie, let's say you've, you're, you're playing with 10 cubes in play, um, five have been knocked down on both sides, then the team could would, uh, would actually split the game, and they each get a half a point. And those points come into play as, as because it sorts primarily by the sum of the game scores. So if you've won five games and you've tied one, you're going to have five and a half points. And that is how, you, based on those points, is how you get ranked. Now, if, if you're tied, then we do have a secondary sort that's really kind of based on a strength of schedule calculation using the opponent score, which means that um, you add up all the scores of the opponents that you've played that day and, uh, and then you subtract out the game where you played them, and that gives you the secondary, uh, the strength, the schedule calculation that is used as, as, as the tiebreaker. Um, there is, it is possible to manually override. Um, let's say you have a, the eighth and ninth seed, and they have pretty much had, you know, they, they end up with the exact same uh, results as far as uh, the primary and secondary sort. There is a way to manually override that. Uh, go ahead and contact us that if you have questions about that. The requirement for the system is that you use a Windows PC, uh, Excel. The system is written in Excel uh, format using a lot of macros. Uh, recommended you add a USB drive for backup and recovery. Um, the autosave features do not work on Macintoshes, at least with our experience. Um, so that's why we recommend that you use a Windows PC. File storage, it will save automatically to, by default, a folder called CDMK. Um, it also will back up at the same time each round to the USB drive. In this case, it defaults to a drive called E. Um, so if your USB drive does show up as something as E, I'll show you in the, uh, in the demonstration how to change that. Uh, I always suggest you bring a backup laptop. Uh, I know of one case where a laptop did crash during a tournament, brought out the backup, moved the USB drive over with the files, and resumed the tournament. Each time you create a new round, it does save a new version of the spreadsheet. Okay, and now this is where I will uh, demonstrate the system. Um, this is what the administrator and scorekeeper does throughout the tournament and uh, teach you a couple tricks along the way. Um, first thing to note is that whenever it does a save of the software between rounds, it copies it to the hard drive, in this case the local drive, to a folder called DMK. 
Oh, and also what I have is I added a USB drive here. That's my removable, uh, my removable disk. And here it will also create to a folder called DMK. Um, you don't have to create that folder. The software will do that for you. Now, in this case, the default is that it's going to, it's looking for the drive to be letter E. Um, and I'll show you the error that you get if you don't have that mapped correctly. And then a couple options or and then describe, show how you can change that to match what the computer says the USB drive is on. Um, so once all the teams have registered before the tournament, you can actually go in and, and populate the spreadsheet ahead of time. Uh, so I go into the tab called Team List. I've added the team names here, and as teams show up and register at the score table, uh, we change them from a no to a yes for active. In this case, just Kubing. I will say yes here. Uh, the Neo Kubers and Quick Kube. Um, so they are all now active. Now, if somebody doesn't show up, um, if it's set to no, the software it it, it won't it won't uh, treat that team as as if, as if they're not there that day. Also, the nice thing is it's really easy to add a team. So if a team does decide to show up that day, um, you can just quickly add them. And I will add this team in and mark them as a yes. Okay, so now we are set. So the first thing we do is we hit create first round. Um, you do this from the team list screen and this will generate the original matchups. Um, now here's the error I was talking about. It says because I don't have my USB drive set to uh, E, it's actually the computer assigned it a, a D. Um, you can go into the system and change that mapping, or what I've, it's, it's even easier to do. Um, here I'm just going to say OK, hit End, and then what you do is if you go to and you say Unhide, there's a uh, a sheet called Pairing. Select that. And then I can change the secondary to D DMK and then hide that again. And now uh, now whenever it saves to it's going to save to the back up to that that USB drive to the D drive. Okay, so now if we go into round one, um, so you see here it shows which pitch the teams will be playing on and with, with the uh, the team with their assignments so now in this case we will have uh so i just couldn't so you have the option so the team comes up and reports let's say kuba trubas comes up and they say that we won so that means that in this case la Cube, which is the first one option they're lost as you can see there then now kuba trubas shows that it's one and so on in this case this team after 25 minutes uh play did not finish their game but harley Cube did have the uh, had more baseline cubes knocked down, so we gave them a did not finish leading. As you can see, then Republicans get the did not finish trailing, and so on. In this case, we'll say this group tied. Um, then the rest of these finished out. Well, let's say this team had a trailing, to show you how that works, and so on. Okay, so now while this round shows up, let's say a t another team showed up, decided they play. Um, you can add them after the fact. Obviously, they're not going to get any points for that first round. Uh, but in this case, we could do that. So I'm going to put in, um, add this team in there. And so then when you generate the next round, that team will be in there. And in this case, somebody else will get a buy. Okay, so now that I've recorded all the scores, typically what I do is I have the tournament director uh, suggest you kind of look it over, make sure everything looks good. Uh, you verified with the teams that they've come up, and then they hit create next round. So now what you'll notice here is if you look at the leaderboard, um, it shows all the teams of one have gotten their game score of one, and uh, the two, th the teams that were leading had the did not finish leading. Here's your ties and so forth. And based on how these are now ranked, is how it's going to assign teams for the next round. Uh, in this case, uh, so now they they play. They start reporting their scores again. We'll say let's 
quickly notice that Bear Coobs did have a buy because now that the uh, uh, the team that came in late, in this case, uh, oops, I was late, so they do get you need know, to mark them as a win. Okay, and then once again, we'll see the leaderboard does get put updated and everything looks good there. So now, um, so in this case, you can see Microcube has won both their games, so they have a game score of two. So in this case, now I will create my next round. Um, let's say you did find an error or something, error. I say if for some reason you need to erase a round that has been started. In this case, I've started round three. You can actually do a control Q on the screen that you're in and that erases that. And then you, in this case, you have to go back to round two and create the round again. Now, the one thing to note is each time I've created a round, it is actually creating a new file for that round. So it saves the previous results. So if I go back to, in this case, my USB drive, I click on the DMK folder, you'll see here um, it has created the new, the new uh, e each new round. Uh, it was missing round one because we didn't have that mapped correctly. But if I go to C, DMK, um, yeah, got extra stuff in there that I was probably testing today, but you can see the last three rounds are, are added in there. Okay, so we'll just uh, quickly do one more round here. Um, typically tournaments, we do seven to nine rounds of these single game qualifiers. Um, in this case, I'm only going to do the three, so I'll show you how the uh, elimination bracketing works. So what's important here is if you don't, um, you do not want to hit create next round if you're on the last round of qualifying. And what I mean by that is um, because if you do that, it's going to kind of mess up the opponent score. So as critical is once you are complete with this, in this case, round three, uh, do not hit create next round because that is going to mess up your uh, the opponent's score. So just leave it. Um, so once you filled in the last scores, then now the play is over and you can then go into the qualify or into the uh, elimination rounds. So in this case, we have, I can show you that here's our leaderboard. Um, what happened here is we look at the top eight teams are going to move on to the championship bracket um, and then the remainder go into a consolation bracket that's what I have shown here um, now we do have uh, several other options if we go into the unhide you can actually um, we have a where you can do a championship bracket of 16 um, and if you wanted to say all the if you could also show this consolation a and how that works is anybody who loses in the first round to 16 the, the eight losers will then go into another consolation bracket. or um, And if you're using the elimination bracket of 16, the other option is you could have the consolation do 17 to 32. And then in order to do that, just unhide it and then uh, possibly hide the elimination bracket and consolation that you won't be using. Okay, as you can see now, it, it's taken those top eight, and so now it takes the number one seed, and they will now play the number eight seed after the, after the qualified play. Uh, in this case, it's going to be 4 and 5, and 2, 7, and 3, 6. Um, we're doing best 2 out of 3 in all these. You can record the score or record the matches, and you'll see how it'll automatically take the winner into the, into the next semifinals here. And I'll quickly show you how that works with the rest of them. All right. Um, now, as you can see, they've moved on to the semifinals, where once again, we do two out of three play. Microcube versus the Cali Coobers. And here, as you can see, the Cali Coobers versus Microcube. And we're going to have uh, Cali Coobers win it in two. So as you see, they get ladies the champion in the second place. Um, and then you can do the two out of three for third and fourth if you, uh, as a director, you choose to do that. And it breaks out as well. Um, so that's basically how the DMK system works here. And now we have, uh, as you can see, also the consolation bracket. 
Um, if you have the zeros in there, those are going to be buys. So you just have to mark anybody who has a buy. And that'll move them on. And then you play out the other ones and so forth. As it, it, as a, and typically, as you see here in the constellations, we typically just do those as single game qualifiers. And in the championship bracket, the elimination bracket, uh, we've been doing two out of three. Thank you for listening to this demonstration. If you have any questions, contact us at unitedwecoob at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to contact us and you want to learn more about it and have a maybe have it more of a hands-on type demonstration, we are available for Google Hangouts. We've done that for a few clubs and it works very well. Um, also, if you want to find the system, it's at kubeunited.com classic-format. Thank you for listening.